Hi there! Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint my coconut crab tyranid scheme. If you've already seen my guide on Imgur, note that some of the details here will be slightly different as I've refined the scheme over time. For this example, I'll be using a tyranid prime. It's been magnetized so the limbs will be painted separately, and it's been pinned to a piece of cork so that I can paint the base separately as well. First, I prime the model white, but the choice of primer is important. You need a smooth coat of white. So I've airbrushed two coats of Viejo Model Air White over Badger Steinal Res Primer. If you don't have an airbrush, you can either prime with a satin spray paint, or brush some white paint over the primer to smooth it out. So first, I'll thin some Viejo Model Color Orange-Brown, and draw a thin line to establish where the orange part of the carapace will be. This should be about one-third of the distance from the edge to the middle. You'll notice that I'm not doing straight stripes, but rather making it uneven and random where I have the room to do so. Next, I take Viejo model color German Camo Black Brown and draw another pair of lines on the carapace, this time about two-thirds of the distance from the edge to the middle. What I'm doing here is defining the areas of the carapace that will be left white, filled in with orange-brown, or filled in with black-brown. This will form the basis for the patterning. So as soon as I've laid down the brown lines, I start filling in that innermost section. The lines I set up earlier are just guides. Once the black-brown is dry, I go back with orange-brown and fill in the next section. With the orange-brown, this may take a couple of coats because it doesn't cover particularly well. At this point, I'm not worrying about making mistakes or getting paint outside the lines, and it's okay if the coverage isn't perfect on raised edges. When I'm done with this, I'll go back with white and black-brown as needed to clean up the transitions between each color and make sure that each one has solid coverage. Right now I have stripes, but my goal is to get the model to look like the white seamlessly transitions to orange, then to brown, as dots gradually cluster up into a solid color. That's tough, because the human brain is hardwired to recognize silhouettes, so as long as there's a visible border between colors, we'll interpret them as stripes rather than the transition effect that I want. So what I want to do is muddle those borders so that there's no harsh edge for the brain to follow. Because I made the borders squiggly to begin with, there's no straight line for the eye to follow, which will make my job a little bit easier. So, I'm going to take some white and thin it about one-to-one -one with water. I'm using a synthetic brush here with a very flat tip. So I've thinned the paint more than I normally would, and I've loaded up more than I normally would on my brush. But what I'm going to do is just touch the tip of the brush to the model, and it's going to leave a bead of thinned paint. When this bead dries, it's going to give us a perfect spot. You'll notice I'm focusing on the transition between the white and orange. I'm looking to cover roughly half the border, and then have the dots decrease in frequency as they get farther away from that border. I'm not applying any white to the dark brown areas just yet, just on the orange-brown. Okay, so now that the main white dots are done, I switch to orange-brown. Same as before, I'm thinning it significantly to get a watery consistency, and using the same technique. This time, I'll be working on both the white and dark brown areas, so this is going to take about twice as long. Again, at the border between colors, I want the dots to be covering roughly half the area. The effect of this is that where the borders were will become the areas where both colors are roughly equal in intensity. I'm also occasionally placing a slightly larger dot. I'll come back to that later. So I'm done with the orange brown, which means it's time to move on to the black brown. This should go fairly quickly. Same as before, around 50% coverage at the border, and then diminish in frequency as it get farther away. While I'm doing this, I'm also going to apply a couple of dots to the larger spots of orange-brown I deliberately put on the white areas. When I'm done with that, I switch back to white and apply some dots to the larger spots of orange-brown on the black-brown areas. Now it's time for a gut test. Take a break, stretch, get something to drink, and come back. When I come back, I'll look over the model and see if I can intuitively spot where the transitions were. If there are places where I can easily and immediately spot where the border used to be, then I'll apply some more dots to the area until I've sufficiently covered it up. Here I think it's looking good, so I don't need to do anything further. Now I take some Army Painter Dark Tone and carefully apply this to the recesses between carapace plates to add some distinction between the plates. Once that's done, it's time to highlight. First, I mix up equal parts orange-brown and white, and use that to highlight the edges of the orange-brown areas on the carapace. 
Then, I mix up equal parts black, brown, and white, and highlight the edges of the black, brown areas of the carapace. At this point, if I've made any mistakes on the carapace, I'll clean up wherever needed, and then the carapace is done. Now I use Army Painter Dark Tone for the hooves, spines, and any melee weapons. Getting some of this on areas where it shouldn't go is inevitable, but I can always clean it up with white later. And once that's dry, I'll apply a second layer to deepen the color. Next is Army Painter Red Tone for detail areas in the joints, vents, and tongue. Again, it's okay to make mistakes, but the more precise I get this now, the less cleanup I have to do later. Okay, so here I'm going to clean up any mistakes I've made along the way, because after this point there's no going back. So I used some thinned white to correct anywhere that the washes overran, and have the model looking fairly clean. Now here's the magic. I take Army Painter Soft Tone, Army Painter Light Tone, Army Painter Quick Shade Wash Mixing Medium, and Water, and I mix all four in equal proportions. I'm going to take this mix and quite simply brush it over the whole model except for the gray parts. This wash recipe will provide shading, but also a subtle highlighting effect as well. It's thin enough to collect in the recesses, viscous enough to settle on the flat areas a bit, and has low surface tension so that it flows off raised edges. The exact mix took a lot of experimentation, and it's important to making the scheme work. Now, I've finished washing the model, but here's where a simple mistake could really mess it up. This wash I just applied flows very, very well, and continues to do so until it's fully dry. So if I set the model down to dry and walk away, I'm going to come back to find an excessive amount of wash pooled on the feet and under the tail. So instead, every couple of minutes I'm going to use my brush to wick up the excess and transfer it back to my palette. This isn't as annoying as it sounds, just means that if I'm working on several models or parts at once, to just occasionally come back to the ones that are still drying and remove any excess wash. After about 15 minutes, it should be dry enough that you can leave it. Okay, so now that the wash is fully dried, I'm going to apply it again. You might be wondering why I'm using two coats rather than one stronger wash. Well, I've unfortunately yet to find a mix that can produce the same effect in one coat. Games Workshop's contrast paint, specifically Skeleton Horde, comes very close, but ironically doesn't produce quite as much contrast. Now, if you'd rather use that and avoid the trouble of messing around with custom mixes and multiple applications, you can certainly do so. With the second wash fully dry, there are just a few details to finish. I apply a bit of black to each eye socket. Then I use white to highlight the teeth. And once the black is dry, apply a tiny dot for a pupil. That's it for painting, so I've gone ahead and pinned the model to its base. Now I just need to varnish. Right now the wash has a glossier finish than the paint underneath it, especially in the recesses, which gives the model a very obviously washed appearance, so I need to fix that. You can varnish with whatever product you prefer, but I'm going to use Pledge Floor Gloss followed by AK Interactive Ultra Matte, both through my airbrush. Here's the model after two coats of the Pledge. It's high gloss, so now the model really looks like it's been candy coated, but the pledge is really tough once it dries, so at least now the paint job is virtually bulletproof. It just needs the Ultramat to kill the shine, and then it'll be done. And with the Ultramat applied, the model's done, with a much more realistic flat finish. Here's the final result, with the magnetized arms attached. If you have any questions, or if there's anything you'd like to see next, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.